Good evening again, everyone. How was dinner? Absolutely, I agree. Well, my name is Brian McKiernan. I am a proud graduate of the Bishop Ward class of 1974. And it is my privilege and my pleasure to be your master of ceremonies this evening. Before we get started in earnest, we have just a few things we'd like to do. First of all, we'd like to thank all of the sponsors who helped make this event possible. Without the generosity and the support of our sponsors, these events would not be possible and they wouldn't be nearly as special as they are. You can find a complete list of all the sponsors for this year's event in your program. And I do invite you to take a look at that at some point during the evening. But right now, let's give a big round of applause for all of our sponsors. Now what we'd like to do is take a moment to thank our student choir members, our student performers, and their music director, Mrs. Julianne Evelsizer, for their performance this evening. We'd also like to acknowledge and thank for being here all of the Hall of Fame members who have joined us here tonight. The complete list of previous Hall of Fame inductees is included in your program, and you can look through that list. But if you are an inductee into the Bishop Ward Hall of Fame, we would ask that you stand at this time so that we can honor you with a round of applause. For all of you who are previous Hall of Fame inductees, we thank you for being here. It's going to be our pleasure to add three to the list of Hall of Fame members. Now we'd like to acknowledge the clergy who have joined us this evening. Please welcome Monsignor Michael Mullen. And I'll adjust. <laughs> Monsignor Stuart Swetland. Father Joel Haug, Father Michael Leon, and Father Mark Murtis. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to begin our evening by honoring a very special angel, Mary Beth Forsyth. Mary Beth was not only the chair of this event, but she also served as a Theological Reflections mentor. She helped design, lead, and fundraise for the sensational renovations and upgrades to our chapel in 2007 and to our auditorium in 2014. She became a member of the Bishop Ward Hall of Fame in 2015. Mary Beth was a devoted supporter of Bishop Ward High School, its faculty, its administration, most especially its students, and its future. She is a true example of grace, confidence, love, and compassion. Here to say a few words about Mary Beth is her Theological Reflections mentee, Yavidia Arroyo. Good evening, my name is Yavidia Arroyo. Um, it was an incredible experience to have Mary Beth as a mentor. She gave me support over the years and I'm so grateful. Her encouragement and support have brought me to this point in my life. Her passion and love for God motivates me to continue in my journey to heaven. She is my inspiration, and I will never be able to take, thank her enough for such generous giving. I would like to thank Mary Beth for listening, for guidance, for inspiration, for encouragement, for being there, and most importantly, for being my mentor. I will always be grateful for her and her kindness. 
I only hope one day I can return the favor and be an inspiration to someone as she was to me. Mary Beth guided me on the right path. She was a fantastic mentor that is worthy of emulation. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yavidia. Folks, here is a reflective passage that was a favorite of Mary Beth's. Frequently draw near to Mary. She is like a most secluded sanctuary where you feel penetrated by the spirit of recollection as soon as you enter. For in her presence, you live no longer amid the agitation of earth, but in the peace of heaven. Mary Beth, thank you for being a daily example of walking in faith. I taught here for 23 years, from 1989 to 2012. The Lord was my world. Seeing the students get excited about math and succeeding made me feel really good. Math permeates all aspects of life. I would ask leading questions and see if they were able to answer the questions themselves, and then they would gain confidence when they were able to answer their own questions. Students that would be A's and B's in every other class were so thankful to get a C from Mr. Carmichael. That meant more to them than an A they got from most teachers. I'm a mechanical engineer. I use the thought processes that he taught and the work ethic that he taught. When they were upgrading all the chalkboards to the whiteboards, Joe did not want a whiteboard. He refused to switch. I think he even came up the day they installed the whiteboards to make sure that nobody would put a whiteboard in his room. He showed me what's really important, how to be a great man, a good Catholic, work hard, value your faith and family. His love made us all respect the subject and, more importantly, respect him. It was just the most amazing dedication. He's in the top five of the teachers that made me want to be a teacher. One of the mathematicians he admired most was Sister Constantia. She taught here for I don't know how many years. Her picture hung in his classroom and it now hangs in mine. He always talked about her because I think he admired not only what a great teacher she was, but what a great person of faith she was. It was more than just teaching the subject, it was about the relationship and really making the students understand that he cared so much about us that he was willing to give everything. To be enthusiastic about your subject that's the most important thing. The last day I taught, it was October the 12th, 2012. And I felt good about what I had done for students through the years. If they try, they will succeed. I was president of Bishop Board uh, from 2005 to 2014. There were a lot of challenges, and one of them was the electrical service. That building was built in 1932 and it was built before computers. We were going to overhaul the St. Albert the Great Science Room to help create future scientists and doctors and nurses. And so that's how I got connected to Rosie and Joe at Mark One Electric. We uh, became very involved at the KCK Chamber and many of the people in the chamber were very tied to Ward. So we thought we want to give back to those communities. We feel very entrenched in 
support is an inner city school that is Catholic and the families that want their kids to go there, they want something special for those kids. So those kids should have a bright future because of that. And if the school wasn't there, you wouldn't have it. I cannot overstate what they have done for Bishop Ward. Because in 2007, I look at that year as the tipping point about fixing up the school so that it could serve the needs of the new population of students that were coming in the future. And Mark One raised their hand and said, we will help you. Many people have been generous, but it's one time they have been generous multiple times over years and huge projects. 90% of the contractors in Kansas City are Catholic <laughs> and of their children, 90% of them went to Catholic high school with no education into what they were going to go into until later. We've been working closely with the staff at the school to try to focus on the trades. We would have kids coming from a Catholic school that taught them ethics and morals and a work ethic. How great it would be if that was part of their training and how much better their giving appetite would be where they look back at Ward and said, hey, I got these opportunities, I want to make sure Ward succeeds later. My senior year in high school, we had gone to New York for a conference. Well, so happens that John Kennedy was at the hotel across the street and saw the sign on the hotel that said Catholic Youth Organization, and he said, well, I want to go talk to those kids. So he came over to the Grand Ballroom. So we were all excited coming back to Kansas City that we had seen the President of the United States and heard him. Monday was our senior retreat retreats were mostly silent so we couldn't share yet on Friday around noontime there was a change in schedule and so we go into the auditorium and they announce that President Kennedy had been shot and killed he was the first Catholic president young energetic there was a lot that appealed to me and probably a lot of teenagers at that time and especially Catholic teenagers. I don't know if there was an exact moment, but I think my Catholic faith instilled in me the desire to serve. I graduated with a master's degree in social work. I spent 35 years at Catholic Charities. For me, it was putting the gospel into action. We try to instill in our children that we are here to serve others, no matter what you do. Once people's basic needs are met, then they can flourish as individuals. We've been married for 50 years. Diane has always been an inspiration to me. She is a caretaker, always worried about, does this grandkid have whatever he needs and do our children need something and she's always so giving and nurturing. She and I have always been on the same wavelength and it's basically what would Jesus do. She is a light to so many people. When you're exposed to the gospel through your religion classes, your retreats, whatever that message was, it permeates what we do. Kids today are looking for purpose. A teacher can be a bridge. I remember that one little girl, she had failed the first test, but then I convinced her to come to the study session it was a two or three hour study session. Afterwards, she got a C on her retest. And I told her, C, you did it, you did it. You, you accomplished what you wanted. I was overjoyed that I helped her in overcoming her fears. My hope for the students is that they will know that if they work hard, they will succeed. Success is getting to heaven. And God helps teachers help students I'm grateful to God to have had the opportunity.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our Hall of Fame inductees. I'd ask Mike Forsyth to please come to the stage to help me welcome and induct our honorees. Our first Hall of Fame inductee, Joe Carmichael. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next Hall of Fame inductee, Diane Gorup Henches, Bishop Ward Class of 1964. And now, accepting on behalf of the Privateer of Family and Mark One, please welcome to the stage Joe Privateer of. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do it one more time. How about a big round of applause for all three of this year's inductees into the Bishop Ward Hall of Fame. To all our inductees, we are very proud to welcome you into the Hall of Fame. Bishop Ward is very blessed to have wonderful, devoted supporters. One of these supporters and alumni of Bishop Ward would like to share his story. So please welcome to the podium Mr. Mike Forsyth. I'm going to read this to you. It don't usually work this way, but it was my wife's suggestion. And when you're married to a double Croatian, you do what they tell you. So I figured she could figure get me back somehow. So on the day before Thanksgiving of 2019. Mary Beth and I were driving to St. Louis to attend the holiday festivities at my son's and daughter-in-law's home. We were discussing the next year's spirit dinner, which we had agreed to chair. The topic was, of course, money. How do we raise the most ever? Why don't people just empty their pockets to help the kids, etc.? One of the things we came up with is most donors know the process to give but how many understand how much the students that receive the scholarships really need them? <clears throat> Mary Beth said we can get a student on scholarship to tell how much they need, the money, and why. I said it would be difficult to have one to do that because they probably would be embarrassed. Family money issues are very dividing and a source of a lot of gossip. She then said I could tell my story. I said same thing applies. It would be embarrassing and people could think differently of me. She reminded me that she had heard me tell many stories about my childhood and time of war, but those stories were to make a point or illustrate something I wanted someone to understand. She reminded me it's for the kids. So here goes. My dad was in Pensacola, Florida for Navy pilot training. 
He was all everything in high school and college. And when he got commissioned, he was well on his way to achieving his goals and his future was bright. Several weeks into the program, he contracted, ger contracted German measles and was in a coma for three days. After a few days to recuperate, he resumed his training. A few days after coming back, he had a seizure and wrecked a training aircraft while taxiing. The Navy doctor just determined he had epilepsy and he was honorably discharged from the Navy. As part of that process, the Navy would send him to his choice of civilian training and he chose radio broadcasting school. He had a college radio show which he enjoyed and he showed a lot of promise. One of the best radio broadcast schools was in Midtown, Kansas City, Missouri. So he did not go home to Minnesota, he moved to Kansas City, Missouri. My mother, a member of the Bishop Ward class in 1943, was a very talented singer. She had the lead role in most of the plays while she attended here. She was adopted by a well-off couple when she was five years old and was her only child. She was in a position to reach her goal of a singing career also. She sang all over the city and one of their favorite, her favorite gigs was as one of the leading singers at the USO Club, which was in downtown Casey, Missouri. She was very popular with the young servicemen that frequented that establishment. The story goes that one night after class, honorably discharged Lieutenant Millard A. Forsythe went to the USO Club to relax and meet people and he spied Barbara Louise Horseman on the stage and love ensued. They were married three days later, much to the chagrin of both sets of parents. Nobody was happy with anybody. <laughs> so the start of their life together was an uphill battle. Dad finished his school and got a job at a radio station in Carthage, Missouri. I was born there about nine months after they were married. He continued to suffer seizures and was let go from the station. We bounced around from relative to relative for a time while Millard was looking for work. It was around that time that Barbara contracted polio. She lived, we lived on welfare. So we got a little help from any of the grandparents. We got little help from any of the grandparents unless my parents would break up. They would not do so, so there we were. In March 1953, right before my fifth birthday, now with four children, my parents sent me to the St. John the Baptist Children's Home to live for two months when my parents got on their feet. My brother and sister joined me there over the months and just before my ninth birthday, we were all sent home. Two more children were born in that four years. Now there is a family of eight living in a two bedroom apartment. In the summer, I was sent to Minnesota to live with my paternal grandparents on their farm. The orphanage was like Disneyland compared to this place. My grandmother was a Christian scientist, so after I fell on a board with two nails in it and the resulting injury went untreated, my parents drove up and took me home. Mom and Dad were doing better and they had found a house for us to live in, but not enough room for everyone, so I lived with my parents, my mom's parents. It seemed like I did not belong anywhere Without the safety and security of the nuns, I was spinning. New kid at school, fat, poor, I was fodder for the bullies. After a while at St. Mary's, the new kid thing went away, but the fat, poor stuck like glue. Neither situation be very easy to shake. We were that family that forgot to have permission slips signed on time, forgot our milk money or our pagan baiting money. You know, that family. We were a hot mess. The biggest tell, tell sign of our situation was my clothes. I would have killed for boys to have to wear uniforms like they do now, but every day was a new adventure in futility. Clothing six children was tough enough for my parents, but finding clothes for me was very difficult. The regular stores had husky sizes, but I was whatever size came after husky. Maybe it was ginormous. Our department stores didn't have that size, so it made no difference anyway. One time on my, one of my bus rides to downtown Kansas City, Missouri, to get my fat shot, I went to Rothschilds to check on what they had. 
They had my size all right, but it cost as much as a car. I will express, explain the fat shots later. Most fat people make up their clothes, make makeup for their clothes that do not fit them by splurging on shoes because it's easier to get shoes that fit. I did not have a pair of shoes that didn't come from the Hills Brothers, two pair for $5 shoe store. Until the end of my junior year here at Ward, when it was each child's tour for new shows as finance allowed, you only got one pair and your his, his sibling got one pair. I usually got cheap tennis shoes that wore that one pair every day for everything. It was a time for a new pair, Tell it was time for a new pair. One of my most embarrassing incidents came because of shoes. We had graduated eighth grade, we had our caps and gowns. Still on a jailer's bout, took a class photo on the steps of the church, all nine of us. When we got the prints back, it was clear that my white tennis shoes were very dirty and so worn out that there was a hole rubbed in the toe. I was mortified immediately and one of my male classmates yelled out, way to go Forsyth, you expletively deleted our photo. I threw mine in the trash as I walked home. I never felt that badly about anything before. Later that su summer, I came to church to serve Mass with Father Herkin, and Sister Lewis Marie asked me if I would drop off a pair of her shoes at the shoe shop on my way home, because I went right by the repair place. I told her, of course I would. I would come over to school after Mass and pick them up. When I got there, that picture was framed and hanging in the hallway with the other graduating classes. I was so upset that after I got Sister Shoes on my way out, I ripped it off the wall and threw it away in the public library trash receptacle. I never told anyone until the day, and I didn't confess it either, and I lied when I was asked about it. So if I don't get to go to heaven, it'll be because of that. <laughs> Another time when we were having senior pictures taken, I needed a coat and tie, a lot of the students who didn't have one borrowed one from their dad or brother. My dad was 6'2 and weighed 145 pounds. I was 5'7, weighed twice as much as he did. I went to the thrift store and bought the largest one they had, a jacket only three sizes too small, and a dress shirt the same size. I wore the coat unbuttoned, and I cut the shirt up the back so it would button in the front, and I kept my jacket on all day, fearing someone would notice. I do not have enough time to relate other situations, many other situations where my lack of good clothing caused me trouble. I would often walk to the ward athletic fields to watch games. I was a rabid fan and couldn't wait until I could attend there so I could play on those fields. I thought that was not going to happen because my parents told me in no uncertain terms that we could not afford it. Later in the summer after eighth grade, I was serving mass again for Father Herkin. And he said after Mass, he would see me in the fall of Bishop Ward. I told him uh, I would not because my parents could not afford it. He seemed to be as disappointed as I was. This is where I could have used a scholarship program if one had existed. A few days later, he called me and had told me that he had talked to Father Maher and had arranged for half of my tuition to be paid and my parents would agree to pay the other half. I was to go home, ask my parents to get back with me. I knew there was no chance they would, but I figured out with my cans and paper routes, mowing money, mowing cutting grass money, and shoveling snow and putting on snow change money, I could pay for it myself. So I lied and told them and my parents and said they would. I struggled to keep up and I had to pay it off a few months after graduation, but I got to go to war. Oh yes, the fat shots. My mother had some side jobs singing at weddings and funerals, but her main side job was that she was a paid soprano soloist at Unity Temple on the Plaza for 20 years. That money helped, but the main benefit was that she had a lot of wealthy fans. They would give her things all the time. My, my mother was very concerned about my weight, 
but most of the actions she took were not helpful. Let me interject here that my mother loved me and was very proud of me. Of that, there is no doubt. An outsider might wonder. She said to me often that I had to lose weight because one, I would never get a decent job because people think fat people are lazy. Two, I would never have a pretty girlfriend because girls do not like fat guys. And three, I would die of a heart attack before I was 30. I believed her, but I just could not lose weight, no matter what the motivation. One of her big fans was an osteopath who had these shots he would give to help people lose weight. They supposedly consisted of pregnant sheep urine as the main ingredient. She signed me up. She also met an MD that put me in Menorah Hospital for two weeks my junior year to run tests and find out why I was fat. The conclusion was he is healthy, but he eats too much. Duh. <laughs> Parents, be careful what you say, because somebody you love is probably listening, and it could affect their life for a long time. This is just one story of a student that needed help to get a quality Catholic education. There are scores of others. <clears throat> Mary Beth and I love the Bishop Ward launches quality citizens into the world. We feel it's the most important work that we do as did as a couple. You can help us in two ways. One, you can pray for the success of our campaign to increase the amount of money available for scholarships. Two, you can donate to the best of your ability without adversely affecting your family. We also believe that God spreads talents and abilities evenly, but opportunities not so much. So it is up to us who've had success to lend a hand to the young people who need it. It is our dream that every Catholic child in Wyandotte County that wants a Bishop Ward education can get it. Current Bishop Ward students, if you or anyone you know is in a situation like mine, I want you to remember that you do not have to be what you are today forever. You can get help and you can have, get it in a great place where many people will help you if you just ask. When you leave here and seek your success in the world, do not forget the young people that come after you. They will need help. My life motto has always been Leave it better, meaning that if you leave every person you meet better off than when you met them, you will have a happy life. I believe it, and I live it, try it, and my work for you. Please consider the envelopes on your tables. Thank you. Mike, thank you so much. We in the Bishop Ward community are truly blessed by your unwavering dedication and commitment to our faculty, our students, and our families. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as Mike said, your support, our support, our generosity, our dedication to the students truly does make a difference. You, we, are changing lives at Bishop Ward High School. This entire room was built just through donations, so their donors giving us our financial aid or our scholarships. That's the reason I'm here. I apply for a scholarship every year. Ward has taught me how to put your education first, but also your faith. Yeah, God made a big impact in my life. The work is different, the teaching is different. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. I'm thankful for every contribution that's been made to the school. When I become an alumni, I'm so excited to be able to give back to my school and give people the same opportunities that I've had. So I can say that I am a part of Bishop Ward. When I graduate, I feel like my parents, that whatever they have suffered, 
it will be for something in life. And I will prove that to them, and I will make them proud. My moment of joy was when I felt that I fit in here. That's why I transferred, and now four years later, I'm senior class president. I'm taking any leadership roles that come to me. And I feel like that really just comes back to Ward's family and faith environment. They made me feel comfortable. They made me feel like one of their own. I want to be a coach, so I want to coach kids. Seeing the joy on their face and playing like sports and stuff and winning is like bringing me a lot of joy. I say for all kids, it keeps us out of trouble. A lot of kids like my my age and younger than me are getting like killed and I just want to stop that and make sure everybody is safe and staying out of trouble and stuff like that. Joy is so like different for for everyone because we all go through like different things. I feel like the journey is like what it's all about. Since freshman year, I've done a backstage for crew. And then during the play this year, we had a student who backed out. I'm not good with public speaking, so I figure if I perform in front of people with pre-written stuff, then I might be able to get over that. I had a week and a half to learn my lines, and I decided I would do it. And then now I've auditioned for the musical, so that'll be in my first time actually you know, on stage. The War Walk, they say it's like a family gathering. Everybody goes and everybody has a fun time. You can be with your friends or you can be having fun with the teachers. I went there my freshman year, I enjoyed it. Sophomore year, I enjoyed it. Third year, I cried because I'm almost close to my last year, so it's a moment to remember. I think journeying well with your friends is all about like taking your own path, but knowing that you have that support from the people that you trust and care about, and knowing that like you have their back as well. When we all around the fire, that symbolizes that, and fire being like Jesus, we all go back to him with each other. We truly do have many wonderful students here at Bishop Ward. And tonight, we are proud to have one of them with us who will share some thoughts with us about her experience of being a student at Bishop Ward. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Junior Valeria Robles to share her story. Um, hello. Um, I'm actually not a junior anymore. I'm a senior. I'm graduating this year, so. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, joy. Um, well, like, I'm graduating this year. I would like to share with you guys my experience here in Bishop Ward and how it has brought joy to my life. So first of all, what is joy? The literal definition of joy is the emotion evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune. But joy is much more than that. And joy is much stronger than happiness and very, very rare. Happiness comes from people and things, while joy is deep-rooted happiness that lasts forever. Bishop Ward granted me the opportunity to feel joy with myself, 
my future, and my faith. Um, first of all, Bishop Ward helped me to make peace with myself, causing deep-rooted happiness in my person. On my first day at Bishop Ward, uh, I was a 15-year-old who had just returned from living in Mexico for three years. Um, I was lost, depressed, and I, I could barely recognize who I was. I wasn't happy with the person that I was. And I wasn't happy with the person I had become, and I had no motivation to continue. The, the first day I stepped into Bishop Ward, I knew my life was going to change for the better. And it did. The people in Bishop Ward helped me build myself up again. They made me believe in myself and never doubt the potential I have. They encouraged me to grow and embrace every single part of myself. Um, I remember one time as a sophomore, I was feeling insecure about a big presentation that I had. And one of my teachers said, I know you don't see it right now, but you have a big potential and I'll help you see it one day. And he did. So now I am in a place with myself where I, where I no longer feel insecure about what I can do. And I am in a place where I know I've grown to be a better version of myself. This is all thanks to the people in Bishop Ward. <laughs> Bishop Ward not only helped me with myself and my courage, but they also helped me to feel joyful about my future. I remember early junior year, um, everyone was feeling, filling in their applications for like scholarships. And a very important scholarship was um, for Casey Scholars, which is $50,000 for, for college. So it was a big one. And I was a little behind due to personal problems. Uh, I remember I was sitting there and began to have a mental breakdown because I didn't know how to start. And and the deadline was in two weeks. So Ms. Kelly and Dr. Sachoglu just sat there with me, offered me crackers, and proceeded to walk me through the process with a lot of patience. And when I say a lot, it's a lot of patience. So thanks to them, I was awarded the traditional scholarship for Casey Scholars. Thank you. <laughs> And now I am more excited to begin my new stage in life. I will be getting my BA in psychology at KU, and I am joyful that Bishop Ward helped me to get to this path. I will finally be able to do what I love the most, and it's all thanks to Bishop Ward. Last but not least, Bishop Ward helped me find my faith. As a person who has gone through a lot, um, it is difficult to have faith in your life but Bishop Ward helped me encounter my faith once more. They showed me that it is necessary for us to believe in something greater than ourselves. They encouraged me to get on the right path and gave me a helping hand when I needed it the most. They helped me find joy in the love of God. In conclusion, joy is a very complex and strong feeling that you gain through numerous great experiences in your life. Bishop Ward not only helped me find joy through the love of God, but joy through my future and especially myself. Thank you. Thank you so much, Valeria. Impressive. Very impressive. A senior, huh? We'll just blame it on 2020. I think we can blame everything on 2020 now. But one thing that Valeria mentioned uh, bears a little bit of further explanation and expansion. That was the word I was looking for. She mentioned the KC Scholars Award Program. And we'd like to let you know that 17 members of the Bishop Ward High School senior class have been selected as KC Scholars Award recipients. Each one of those students has earned a $50,000 college scholarship.
Now, Mr. Carmichael, I didn't have you for math, but I can do math, and if I multiply that all out, that's $850,000 of college scholarships earned by students at Bishop Ward High School. Well done, students. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Bishop Ward President, Mr. Jay Dunlap. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's great that this is a scholarship dinner, and we're focusing on that great bit of news about scholarships, but you know what? There's even more great news, record-setting news, more recent news. As a matter of fact, it was just made public yesterday, but I'm going to make you wait for a second. <laughs> because uh, the purpose of my speaking to you right now is a very brief state of Bishop Ward. Well, you can't talk about the state of anything these days without talking about the impacts of the COVID-19 epi epidemic, right? Uh, towards the end of the first semester, when uh, we had been in a hybrid educational mode, right, from the beginning of the school year. So that meant uh, a number of our students were coming on Mondays and Thursdays. Others were coming Tuesdays and Fridays. Wednesday was an online-only day. If you weren't in the building, you were learning online at home, and because we were doing that, we made it so that many students could learn online only. And that's the way we've been doing things. And that's a big challenge. And we were seeing some kids who were not checking in uh, as they were supposed to online. So our folks, as is normal, if a student's not in school we, and, and it's chronic, then they have to be reported for truancy. But when our dean of students reached out about the truancy problem, the local police said, we can't help you. In our community, in the public high schools, truancy was at 50%. So they could not enforce the truancy laws. The impacts here at, Christ, at uh, Bishop Ward, uh, we have, in the course of the year, lost basically 5% of our student body to the COVID impacts, uh, where the students just weren't engaging, they weren't making progress. And that's tragic. But I think in context, that's 5% versus 50% in the larger community. So that's the bad news. The good news is, in March, we received word from the Centers for Disease Control that in schools, because it seemed that the pandemic was not being spread in schools, we could go from a six-foot social distancing to three-foot social distancing. And so I started getting on the horn to the folks at the county health department and say, all right, can we bring more students? Can we bring them back? And we did. So we started bringing them back. And so we still had to offer the online only because we had promised families that. But Everybody else who was coming to school was coming to school the rest of the week. It wasn't just two days, they were up to four days. So that was a good thing. Uh, and we started to see and started to feel like a school again because we had the critical mass of students in the building and things really picked up. And that was at March and at the end of March we got to have the ward walk, much as you saw in the video. So the kids were out there and the faculty was throwing the colored powder on them and it was a great delightful thing and it was a feeling of being Bishop Ward again, in spite of the pandemic. Well, what's the big scholarship news? Yesterday in our cafeteria, the folks who run the Hispanic Development Fund, which is a scholarship granting organization, also does other charitable works in our community, it's been around since the 1970s, came here because this year, Bishop Ward had more applicants for HDF college scholarships than ever before. We had 26 of them. And they came to tell our seniors that not only was it the most from Bishop Ward, we had the most applicants in the whole KC metro area. And that, that is a tribute to the work of Ms. Mary Kate Kelly, our guidance counselor, Dr. Emily Satsiaglu, Dr. Michelle Olson, our principal, and a terrific team here that's making sure the kids are making the most of their opportunities. 
But even better than having the most applicants from our school and in the metro area was that every single one of them has been awarded a Hispanic Development Fund scholarship for college for next year. So that's on top of our 17 KC scholars, the 26 uh, HDF scholars. And I have to throw out uh, kind of a shout out to Pablo Oropesa, whom you heard sing a couple of songs, even in Italian this evening. Uh, Pablo got one of those KC Scholar scholarships, but he also was accepted to the University of Notre Dame. And, and he must have gotten a whale of a financial aid package because he's going. And he says the family can afford it. I mean, that's a two. I, I, I take pride because I'm a Notre Dame grad myself, but I know that the tuition now is 10 times what it was when we were paying 7000 a year back in the 1980s. So, uh, so congratulations to Pablo. But that's just another representation of the excellence and the achievement that's happening at Bishop Ward in a school that since 1908 has been lifting up the, the minds and the souls of young people in this community. Well, what are some of the other things, some of the other exciting things? That, this has been a great week to be at Bishop Ward, I have to tell you. Most of the news I'm telling you has just come around this week. So, for instance, um, just yesterday I was meeting with Mike Forsyth and a team because Mike isn't done yet with renovations around here. He's helping us renovate the chapel again, and we had a terrific meeting about making it an even more beautiful, more welcome, and a holier space by doing some architectural improvements and renovations. And we're doing it because it's what his beloved Mary Beth wanted, okay? <laughs> Thursday after school, I got to hear our three seniors who are going to be speaking at graduation ceremonies, both the mass and graduation, and they had me laughing, and they moved me, and I just came out of that meeting so immensely proud of our students and the way that they are going to represent themselves on May 12th and 13th when we have our baccalaureate mass and our graduation. Uh, we signed a deal yesterday. There are lots more steps along the way, but we're moving towards having a cell phone tower put up on our athletic fields. And the beautiful thing about that is it's going to enable us, it's going to pay us a bunch of money, we're going to swing a deal to get it all up front so we can do things like upgrade the lighting. I don't know if you've ever noticed that we've got eight old wooden poles out there with 1940s lighting and when you go in the box to actually pull the switch and, and turn on those lights, the sparks fly. So I think our coaches draw straws and who gets the short straw has to go risk his life to turn on the stadium lights. But that's all in the process of being upgraded. And we'll count on Joe and our friends at Mark One to help us with that, I'm sure. Uh, aside from the 17 KC scholars from last year, we got word again just yesterday. And they, they, they kind of do a couple of announcements. The first announcement yesterday was six more KC scholars but there are gonna be some additional ones named in a couple of weeks. So we know we've got more KC scholars that are gonna be in our senior class next year and leave here with those $50,000 scholarships. And, and finally, Monday evening of this week, we had our induction for the National Honor Society, and that's a wonderful thing to do. Those are kids who are doing everything the right way. They care about the faith, they, they do the work in the classroom, they're a delight to have and to work with. And we reflected during that ceremony on the term honor, which if you think of as a verb, there's to honor them, to acknowledge their work, and that's what we were doing. But the other meaning of honor is to fulfill an obligation. And that's what we're charging those young people to do, is to fulfill an obligation. And it's not an obligation we give them, it's an obligation God gives them. And really, it's the same obligation God has given to each one of us here in our vocation in life, in our members of his church, of his people, and members of this Bishop Ward community to support what's going on here. We're so excited about the college scholarships our kids are getting, but so many of them are only able to get it because they got the scholarships to get them through here. Despite the COVID impacts of students who didn't engage, we've had so much donor support for families who've been negatively impacted by the pandemic, 
that none of our families are finishing the year owing for this year to the school. Our donors have been able to help everybody. And so, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, we appeal to you now to join in that effort, to help us with the scholarships, to keep lifting up the kids, to keep lifting up the families, and lifting up this community as only a Christ-centered education like you get at Bishop Ward can do. You have the envelopes, and if you have the will and the means, please join us and support us. Thank you, and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are taking the opportunity right now to support scholarships at Bishop Ward, we do have several students who have baskets here. They are walking among the tables, and they can collect your envelope from you when you are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank all of you who have found it possible tonight to contribute to our growing scholarship fund. 
The opportunity exists year-round if you or other people that you know, members of your family, would like to continue to grow that fund. It's possible all year round. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, it's just about time to bring this year's event to a close. We'd like to extend a few very special thank yous as we wrap up this evening. First, we'd like to thank our event chairs, Mike and Mary Beth Forsyth. We'd like to ask Mike Forsyth to come up to the stage, please, to accept a token of our appreciation for his involvement and leadership. And for those of you who know Mike Savage's work, nobody captures the spirit of Bishop Ward like Mike Savage. Now I'm gonna ask this young lady to my right to step just a little bit further forward, and I'm also gonna ask her to take off her mask so that you can see her. So Lindsay Hernandez is a Bishop Ward alum. She currently works in our advancement office with Carrie Stein as our director of advancement, who I believe is over here. And Lindsay has been the point person on this event. She has worked tirelessly with the rest of her team. They do great work all year round in support of the students and the faculty and the staff of Bishop Ward High School. So let's give a round of applause to Lindsay and to the advancement team. In addition to our advancement team, we'd like to thank all of our other spirit committee, our volunteers, our student volunteers, our students who have helped us all out tonight. It's so nice to know you will be graduating this year. <laughs> Finally, we'd like to thank one more time our inductees into the Hall of Fame this year, Joe Carmichael, Diane Henches, and the Private Tira family. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll close our evening with a prayer, and I invite Bishop Ward student Roy Williams to the stage to offer that prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather. We thank you for the inductees that we inducted into the Hall of Fame. We thank you for life. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for knowledge and understanding. We thank you for new grace. We thank you for new mercy. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and we give you all the glory in Jesus mighty name. Amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this evening's event. Remember, all the proceeds benefit Bishop Ward students through the scholarship fund. We hope to see you again next year.